Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, the first edition since Thanksgiving in America. So we're all recovering over here. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashenden. It's the 29th of November and here it's just cold. It's only a degree or so above freezing and I have a radiator to my right hand side. So if I disappear <laughs> out of view, it's because I've started to shiver and I want to warm up. <laughs> So, Gavin, the, the wife hasn't let you put in a big uh, uh, stove in there to throw wood in and uh, 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 warm up the, the facilities, huh? I would, I would so love a wood burner in here. We, we have wood burners in our house, and that's what we live from. My, my wife um, is a... I, I don't think she'll watch this. She's a very focused person. <laughs> I hope she doesn't watch it. it. It'll be just my luck. She'll say, hey, darling, I really want to catch up on what you said on Anglican Unscripted. And I'll say, oh, no, no. no you don't want to that. That's garbage. She's, um, <laughs> she's, she, she has some wonderful values, one of which is not wasting electricity. So ah. she has a, keeps a very close eye on what... Um, at, um, at, App, not applications, appliances. No, but, what appliances cost? And I have a, I have this oil-fired radiator in my cathedral shed, um, and uh, we discuss uh, how long in the day I can run it and on what temperature. And uh, so, <laughs> so, do you get to you negotiate? Would, I'll do this for more wood, you know, for more electricity. <laughs> but I, I, so the house we keep ourselves warm with wood burners, and we try and harvest our own wood as much as we can, but I'm allowed some 20th century, 21st century technology in the cathedral shed. Thank God. <laughs> I, I must admit that the strength of my marriage is that Jill does not watch the program as well. Uh, <laughs> it, it's just the, the nature of uh, our wives just let us go do our little hobbies. Oh, did you get to talk to your friends on camera? Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes Jill, I did. It, it was fun and we had laughs. We talked about the news. Um, we need to move on to the news because uh, I think what really happened and, and probably saved the Archbishop of Canterbury or saved the Anglican Communion was that a uh, Prince Harry announced that he's getting engaged. And that is, even over here in America, if it, you go to any uh, the BBC, the American edition, the, the top five stories are all about uh, uh, this engagement and how it, what it's going to do for the royal family and where they're going to live, what type of ring she has, the, the, the clothing they wore on their first interview, all these types of things uh, that the British press just loves. Uh, kind of overshadowed an interview that the uh, Archbishop of Canterbury gave uh, this week where he said, and this is the, 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 the quote, the, kill, the killer quote, uh, evangelical support, I'm just going off verbatim here, for uh, Donald Trump baffles me. Uh, I have nothing I can complain about that quote. But he goes on to say other things that uh, luckily Gavin and I get to talk about on today's show. Gavin, uh, I know it's cold over there. Did you get a chance to watch the full uh, interview with uh, Archbishop Welby? I, I did. It was, on, it was on Sunday morning, so I had to pick it up on catch-up. Um, and uh, the interesting thing is there was very little fuss about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I heard from one or two people it was on, and I thought I I, I better go and see what it was. Um, when I watched, uh, I nearly fell off my chair um, <laughs> with with astonishment. Um, and so when I say there was no fuss about it, what I mean was the the, the secular press uh, m found everything he said completely acceptable, uh, and that seems to me to be a real problem because. <laughs> If a senior Christian leader in the most secular society in the world stands in the public space uh, and in commenting on public affairs says things that everybody agrees with, then you have to ask, where was the Christianity? Because <laughs> whenever you do bring in Christianity, they get very angry and very cross. So one of the things I did was I, 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 I made careful notes of the things he said, not in order to, um, uh, to, to humiliate or to... Um, demonize him but, but to, to try and understand the points of divergence what what happens is every so often there's an event and we talk about the archbishop and the values that he represents and the values that he um encourages the, the the hierarchy to represent and i think sometimes it would be easy for people to think that you know we're just cross with him and it's prejudice so i'm very glad when an opportunity comes to to pay attention to his words to see 
if I had misunderstood him, there were a few nuances one needs to give him credit for. And I'm really sorry, Karen, Karen but it was it was as bad as I could imagine. <laughs> and, and, and this is this is my my what baffles me. I remember in the early days when it was announced, uh, Bishop Justin Welby of Durham will be our uh, upcoming uh, Archbishop of Canterbury. And all the, well, he's an evangel. I heard he's an evangelical. Yeah, he's an evangelical. And he did a couple interviews, and none of those interviews uh, were off-putting to the evangelical community. I remember he did interviews inside big churches, uh, and they were broadcast around Britain, and you could watch them on YouTube and stuff like that. And I walked away feeling kind of comfortable. Well, this isn't going to be so bad. Um, he's an evangelical. He won't be another Rowan Williams. Um, he seems to be able to make decisions um, and and stand by them. How how bad could it be? And he was he was the bishop at Durham. How bad could that be? And so uh, I I felt comfortable. But the more interviews he does, the I'm wondering what version of the Bible he has or what seminary he went to. What seminary did he go to? Uh, he went to Cranmer Hall in the, in Durham in the north. Did he attend basic theology? Did he miss those classes? <laughs> what were his? I want to know his grades. Can we not get the grades of the Archbishop of Canterbury? Well, we yeah. know his grades as, as an undergraduate at Cambridge, and they they were not hugely impressive. Oh, okay. Um, but 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 um, leaving that aside, he he did some very good things. And one of the impressive things he did when he was Bishop of Durham was he uh, quite, which is a poor area on the whole. Sure, uh, it's it's. Um, under-resourced. Uh, he, he gave a commitment that the, the the diocese's budget would reflect the capacity of the church to give. Um, I, I thought that was very brave and uh, won my immediate uh, admiration for him. All right. uh, I don't know how easy it is to run a diocese like that, but I thought it was exactly the right principle. And so that combined with the fact that uh, he seemed to love Jesus and he used the language of, of, of the kingdom uh, very easily in a way that made him made it feel like he was a brother in Christ. So at, at that level, I think he had a great deal going for him. And that, of course, he'd been associated with Holy Trinity Brompton, and everyone thought, well, that's that's great too. Well, the yeah, problem it, comes, and when, that means he came up through the Alpha movement. Um, well, well, it doesn't mean he came up. It, no, it just means he's associated. With associated. It. I mean, okay, the, right. The, I mean, uh, the the problem with uh, going to a church which has two thousand people in it is, you know, not all of them fully embody the values of the alpha movement just because you've gone there <laughs> okay uh, so i'll give you we, that one <laughs> so, um, we, you know he had these associations and he develops the 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 easy christian language um which which is kind of code language for many of us telling each other we belong to the same club uh and you know every, everyone does that that that's fine uh, and we have we have to one of the challenges of being a christian is to learn to be in Christ with a Roman Catholic or, or a, a Romanian Orthodox who don't always use that kind of language. But we give a very, those of us who've, who've been in evangelical culture, give a free pass instantly to people who use the word of Jesus affectionately and often. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in, in the Gospels, Jesus says, uh, not all those who say unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. You're going to have to put some heft and some commitment behind your language and i think that's our difficulty with justin welby that we hear the language but when we look at his theology especially as he explains it on the secular platform uh, there is a really serious credibility gap well one of the things i've noticed uh in his interviews is there's always one greatest sin uh that he's able to identify um he people ask him all the time you know what do you think of this what do you think of that um, and he doesn't uh, at all stop or hinder and say, by the way, the greatest sin is homophobia. Yeah, there is no greater sin. Um, Jesus may not have mentioned it, but I'm here to tell you the greatest <laughs> sin of all uh, in all creation since day one is homophobia. And I've always seen that in his interviews, at least in the last three or four years. Now, is that just to placate the BBC and the British press? Um, the, let's stop here and let the people know. There is no press like the British press. They are as pagan as they can come. They uh, represent a society that is going down the tubes, and they are the engine for that society. 
Um, it, people here in America, you get your tabloids and stuff like that. There's just no comparison to sitting down with somebody from the BBC and, and knocking their brain and asking questions. And you're like, well, what are you thinking? Um, so backing up to there, uh, is he just placating this type of press coverage? No, I don't think he's. I don't think he is placating them at all. He's simply one of them. One of the things you look at is body language, and um, uh, the Archbishop came on uh, very, very much at ease. Mm -hmm. He was being interviewed by a man called Robert Peston, who's an economist. Uh, he's a bit of a boffin. He he has sort of th th thick glasses and uh, speaks in something of a monotone sometimes. Um, he doesn't have a full range of human emotions, but but he's a uh, he, he's a, an absolutely standard BBC presenter. Right. And and quite clearly there was some previous chemistry, uh, and they they look good together. They were very happy in each other's company. Now. Um, if this is because they really like each other as human beings, well, that's wonderful. If it's because they see the world in exactly the same way, that should cause us some alarm. So as we, and we, we one wouldn't know, you know, whether it's both or or just one. So as we went through the interview, the um, Robert Peston said, "What what do you think about the budget?" Um, well, uh, Kevin, if I may blow my own trumpet mode, I have degrees in four separate disciplines, wow. uh, you know, law, theology, <laughs> psychology, and a PhD in literature. And if somebody said to me on television, Gavin, what do you think about the budget? I would be very, very hesitant before I said a word. But immediately, Justin Welby said, the problem I have with the economy under this government is it has not produced justice and equality. So you go, whoa, wait a minute. Um, right, where does let, let Jesus say? Yeah, okay. right. <laughs> where where does Jesus say I'm holding Mammon accountable for not producing justice and equality? And the answer is absolutely nowhere. So, but but this is the justice and equality are in the same way that you and I meeting a Christian would be comforted by him saying Jesus is Lord. Uh, a secular progressive is comforted when you say justice and equality. So they're the trying to tribe words that say tribal words that say I'm I'm one of you, but um, they don't belong to the Christian tradition uh, as they are expressed in that context. Yeah. So then um, he was uh, he was he then said you know Jesus was famous about caring for the poor, and I went whoa wait a minute that's that's a theological biggie. Um, one of the Gospels, uh, Luke in particular, talks about the poor in spirit mm -hmm. uh, it, it, to qualify Matthew's just using the poor. But he quite clearly thinks that people need to know Jesus was worried about spiritual poverty more than he was worried about material poverty. Uh, and as you read the Gospels, you, you need to know that. That's, comes, that's quite clear. So, so just talking about Jesus and the poor takes it right out of the out of the kingdom context and puts it back into the political context. It, uh, it, anybody who's had a chance to go through the Sermon on the Mount uh, is probably surprised to to learn that blessed are the poor. Um, in yeah. fact, it doesn't say, if you really want to go for the, the true Hebrew context, uh, it says, congratulations, you are poor. Yes, and, uh, but, 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 not, but not, not congratulations, you have trouble peeking a roof over your head. No. Congratulations, you know there's a real problem. You have a deficit with the Father. Yeah. It's that kind of poverty. Yeah. It, it's, it's spiritual deficit, not economic deficit. Uh -huh. um, and, uh, and then he went on to say something that was really big. Again, I nearly fell off my chair. He was asked about the customs border in Northern Ireland, and, and not all the viewers will understand how problematic this is as a political hot potato, and we, I, I won't explain now. Um, but, he, but he began to, he used it to segue into his favorite subject, which is reconciliation. And so then he said, you know, I have a problem with with uh, this with Brexit because I have a problem with the customs border, because I because it won't help reconciliation between the north and uh, north and south Irish. And then he went on to say that um, uh, the thing he was most concerned about in our society was that people should not be horrid to each other, but they should be capable of being reconciled. Well, that's great. And then he threw in a bit of gospel. Because to be Christian, to reconcile with the Father through Jesus Christ, hooray, that's great too. But then he went on to say something which which was a complete and utter non sequitur and a, and, and a theological problem, <laughs> heresy. He then said the fact that Britain had been Christian should spill over 
into the capacity to do good disagreement for one another and be a united country. Uh, and so this is an extraordinary thing no, to say. He, because the, okay. He said it's a gospel imperative knowledge for Christian society to have good disagreement. Uh, uh, he, 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 yes, he did. He said huh. that the, the fact that... Well, he, he could have said the fact that we are now Christian means that we should be able to do good disagreement. But yeah. it wasn't even that. It was the fact that once we had been Christian, uh, a generation or two ago, that should spill over historically into the capacity to do good, to do good disagreement and get on with each other. But, but, but apart from the fact that it's nonsense <laughs> and apart from the fact that it isn't true, yeah. why would you think it ought to be true? Yep. You would only think that if you didn't take seriously the fall of human beings in each generation. Uh, you would only think it if um, if you thought that somehow Christianity was something in the atmosphere that could influence you proportionately or something like as if it was a cultural phenomenon. Uh, so, so, you know, what on earth is his view of Christianity and of secular society that he should join those dots in that particular way? I, I mean, it was it was mind bogglingly nonsense. Then he was asked um, the, the, the normal trap that people use. This is your homophobia issue. Tim Farron was the leader of our Liberal Democrats. He resigned because he, uh, he couldn't free himself from the injunction of the Bible not to sanction gay marriage. So Justin Welby was asked, did he have any sympathy for Tim Farron, who had said that nowadays in Britain, you cannot be a political leader and believe in the Bible? What did the Archbishop think about that? And the Archbishop said, I have a good deal of sympathy for Tim Farron. Oh, good. And he went, I, I would, Hooray! Yeah, Christian like, witness whoosh. at last. And then, <laughs> and then he went on to say, and I have a great deal of sympathy for those who called him out. You mean for the people who called him a bigoted homophobe, you have sympathy for them too? And the answer was, yes. This <laughs> is crazy. So you have sympathy for someone who who finds it difficult to hold public office because they believe in the Bible, then you have sympathy for those who handed him out of office because he believes in the Bible. You, you know, I, again, I nearly fell off my chair. I, 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 and then the final thing was, do you have any understanding about how it is that fundamentalist Christians in America could vote for Trump? The, the first thing he should have said is, it wasn't just fundamentalist Christians who were Orthodox and Catholics and, you know, there were a whole variety of people who, and then, and then he might have said, well, they might have not been voting for Trump, but they would certainly as Christians have been very worried about the agenda that Hillary Clinton had, which was, a, which was, which is undescribably uh, anti, anti-Christian. Or he might have said, uh, it is not unusual for flawed political characters to be very unappealing in themselves but nonetheless to stand for principles that you can align themselves with but in the end he just said i have no idea why, why <laughs> i'm baffled i'm baffled by christian trump hey, and as an american i'll give him that one uh however you know my portfolio has done well under trump uh, my uh, state has decided to actually pass a budget now that Trump is president. Uh, there are a few good things that uh, can be noted. Um, my question is, why would an English archbishop have any uh, reason to uh, criticize uh, Christians here in America or have an opinion about uh, a person such as Trump? The difficulty was, I think this takes us back to the body language at the beginning of the program. Mm -hmm. um, it has become a sign of, uh, of of civil sanity to hate Donald Trump. Uh, and when there is a there is a kind of progressive elite in our country who also hate Brexit, even mm -hmm. though the majority decided the democratic deficit was something they wanted to 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 do something about. So within the media and within the southeast. Um, there are two things that make you a, a, a member of the superior cultural tribe, and that is hatred of Trump and hatred of Brexit. Uh, and, and then really very sadly, and this is something Christians ought to be above, uh, is the demonizing of people who hold these views. Uh, so, you know, once again, to, to, be, to, be, to admit to being baffled shows not only ignorance, but it also plays into the fact 
exactly the op exactly the the sin he was arguing against at the beginning of the program. Let's have good disagreement. Um, but he's but he's not willing to have good disagreement with Trump. He just wants to demonize him and the people who voted for him. Anything else would be baffling. You know, this is not cons these are not consistent values, Archbishop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we need to finish up our program. Gavin, I want to... Oh, wow, 20 minutes. Well, that was all me. I'm sorry. Um, but as we finish up here, uh, if the Archbishop of Canterbury baffles you, like the program, share us with your friends. Um, I'm expecting at least a thousand likes for, for today's episode, uh, just on, on the baffles comment alone. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm Gavin Ashenden. I'm not baffled. And this has been episode 348 of Anglican Unscripted. But you are a little cold today. <laughs> physically, physically, Kevin, I'll admit to being cold. Emotionally, spiritually, I'm still hot. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>